What's up, Buck Dougaldini in the garage? Today, I wanna to share a heck of a saga with you. Over the course of this summer so far, I've been chasing a cooling issue in this Jeep. This is a 2001 Jeep Grand Cherokee WJ with the 4.7 liter V8. It was running hot. It was not overheating, uh, but it was running routinely between 210 and 215 during normal operation. You know, my commute is uh, mostly uh, back roads, some stoplights here and there. It was running between 210 and 215. It's not overheating, but it's like just at the edge of okay. And uh, if you don't know, the 4.7 has an issue where if it gets hot, you drop valve seats. It happens alarmingly frequently. Most people agree that it's because of letting the engine run hot. So this was number one priority for me to fix. I've been chasing this issue all summer and I finally fixed it. Just this weekend, I finally figured out the problem. It was ridiculous, stupid little problem, but I tried a bunch of stuff in the process. Uh, and I wanna share the whole story with you. The first thing to understand about the 4.7, it, it's key to this story, is the cooling fan is not a normal cooling fan. Most engines have either an electric cooling fan or they have a mechanical cooling fan. Electric cooling fan is obviously an electric fan. It's run uh, you know, by, um, uh, off of temperature sensors. Well, it's run by your um, uh, ECU, which uses temperature sensors to decide when the fan kicks on, whatever. Uh, then you got a mechanical fan that's usually attached to your water pump. Uh, it, it is run off the engine. Now the 4.7 here has a hydraulic cooling fan. Um, what it is, is it's a hydraulic, it's got two hydraulic gear rotors um, that run off power steering fluid and they're powered by the power steering pump. Now the reason they did this or the reason they tell us they did this is so that they could facilitate the heavy duty towing capacity that they wanted to be able to give the 4.7 liter uh, WJ. There are issues with electric fans and mechanical fans. Electric fans, uh, they don't really cool once you're moving kind of quickly. So if you're on the highway, an electric fan's not really doing anything. It's just the air that's moving over the radiator. Mechanical fans steal some power from your engine. In some cases, they steal a lot of power. Um, and your miles per gallon goes down, uh, so your overall horsepower and torque that you're getting to the wheels goes down. Now the hydraulic fan being run off of the power steering pump is using excess energy. The power steering pump, <clears throat> according to the engineers that put all this together creates X amount of power. I don't have the exact numbers. I couldn't find them. I, I did look. It creates X amount of power. But to run your power steering system, it only uses a, a fraction of that power. So they're capturing that excess energy and uh, routing it to these gear rotors to operate this fan. Uh, it's an engineering marvel, if you will. Um, it's, it's kind of a cool idea. It solves some of the problems of the um, hydro of the uh, electric fans and the mechanical fans without, you know, it doesn't steal any extra energy, but I mean, these things can get cooking. Uh, Martin built was talking about a mod you can do to get this thing up to uh, about uh, 2,500 RPMs, which is insane. Um, it's also, it's a pretty heavy duty fan. You know, if you're looking at it, it's, it's a real heavy duty fan. You can see that it, it could really facilitate some good cooling. So that's the fan system and the cooling system that we're dealing with. Uh, the very first thing I did when I got this Jeep was I replaced the radiator uh, because it had a crack in it. If you guys remember, you know, I got this Jeep pretty cheap. I uh, got it up in Sussex, New Jersey. Um, I drove it back to my house with the coolant, the radiator pissing coolant everywhere. Uh, Eric and I marathoned it back roadkill style and uh, put a new radiator in it. So. The summer starts, I'm noticing it's peaking under uh, traffic conditions if I'm sitting at a light or if I am uh, towing with it and overall it's just running a little hotter than I'd like, 210 to 215. The very first thing I do is I bleed the cooling system. The 4.7 in addition to having a weird cooling fan also has a, a unique cooling coolant filling procedure, there's a bleeder valve uh, at the uh, inlet for the upper radiator hose. You crack this little um, eight millimeter nut off and um, you let the air out of the system that way. I thought maybe when I did it last time when I replaced the radiator, um, it did not fully get all the air out. So I tried that, that did not work. At that point, uh, I started thinking, I kind of got ahead of myself and I started thinking, well, screw it. I will put, uh, I'll put rescue fans on it. I'll put pusher fans on it. Uh, you guys heard me talk about that. I mentioned it in some videos. So what I did was I, I've, I've wanted to put an external 
transmission cooler on this Jeep anyway because I want to be able to do some heavy duty towing. I really want to uh, kind of mod this Jeep out to be the ultimate daily driver utilitarian WJ. Um, so uh, you saw the video, I did the video, real clean install if you ask me. I put the um, transmission cooler in um, but I recognized, well, this isn't going to help my friggin' cooling issues, you know, it's, it, if anything, it's going to exacerbate them because now I've got a radiator in front of my radiator. At that time, I also put two pusher fans on the front of this Jeep, one in front of the power steering cooler. I forgot to mention that uh, these things, in addition to having the power steering running the um, fans, they put a power steering cooler in place uh, because they're asking the power steering fluid to do all that work, so they also put a cooler in there. So on one side of the radiator is a power steering cooler, on the other is now my transmission cooler. In front of each of those, I put a 10-inch pusher fan wired to a switch. My thought was this. If I, when I'm on the highway, the Jeep was cooling fine. Uh, it was when I'm doing like slow, you know, 35, 45 uh, mile an hour driving or uh, definitely stoplights, towing. I live in a very hilly area of New Jersey, uh, downright mountainous for this part of the country anyway. So going up and down the mountains, uh, it'd be getting hot. 215 was not an uncommon sight and that made me very nervous. So my thought was, I got two pusher fans in the front, rescue fans, boom. I can hit the switch when I'm getting hot. Hopefully that'll bring it down. Uh, the week after I did that, it was real hot in Jersey. I think it was 85 was the low all week. We got up to about 92. Uh, so everywhere I drove, I had my code reader plugged in with the data streaming on, looking at my engine temperature, trying to figure out, do these fans help? Can I get the fans to help? Um, and the answer was no. The fans helped a bit, but it was clear that my problem was bigger than this and I was if the cooling fans worked at all they did work a little bit at one point I got there was an accident and I got stuck in traffic for 20 minutes and I was able to keep my AC on with the pusher fans running and keep it between 213 and 215 but that's not normal that's not normal and that was only an 85 degree day I, I con I'm concerned that if it was a 95 degree day uh, the story would have been different so it was clear that if the pusher fans worked at all, they were just band-aiding a greater issue. All right, and at this point, I'm actually a little bit demoralized because I, I don't have the time or the energy to chase major friggin' issues in this Jeep. It is my daily. I already have a Jeep sitting in the driveway that I chase major issues on all day long. This, this one's supposed to be the no thinking. So at this point, I'm a little bit annoyed, I'm a little bit demoralized, and I kind of just can't wait for the summer to be over so that I don't have to deal with freaking cooling issues anymore. Because I'm, I'm starting to think the worst. What if there's a bigger issue here? Now at this point, I, I had to take a step back and start thinking a little deeper, and based on the clues that uh, I had, obviously, it, the rule of thumb is if you're overheating while you're driving, it's your radiator. If you're overheating while you're sitting, it's your fan, right? Now, I'm overheating basically when I'm sitting. It's in low speeds or when I'm sitting at traffic lights. So it's gotta be the fan, right? The, hydro the hydraulic fan is a lot harder to diagnose than an E-fan. The E-fan in my beloved four liter WJs have a fatal flaw. What is it? Everybody knows. Let's say it together. The relays, right? So you go to the junkyard, you get a pocket full of relays, you drill a hole in your header panel right under the headlight so that if you're sitting in traffic and you're overheating, you pull over, you replace the relay, and you go about your merry way. That's the problem. Everybody knows, people complain about it, but it's a dang easy fix, all right? I literally, my four liter that sits in the driveway has about five relays that I've pulled from junkyards for a dollar a piece, sitting in the glove box, and screw it. If the fan stops working, whatever. Now, I'm, I'm looking at the hydro fan, and it spins, but it seems like it's spinning slow. So I dive into the forums, and I'm like, what the hell's going on? You know what I mean? Like, what do I do? The, there's nothing controlling the hydro fan that you can affect. The hydraulic fan uh, is directly controlled. It's got a solenoid, and that solenoid gets uh, signals directly from the ECU. Uh, well, the, the uh, power distribu distribution unit through the ECU. There's no relay, there's no fan, there's nothing really to replace. The solenoid can go bad, but there's a way to test it. Uh, right in between your alternator and your um, uh, what you call it, your AC pump on the 47, 
buried down in there is a temperature sensor that uh, is measuring the temperature of your coolant. That's where the gauge on your dashboard, that's where it gets its information from, that sensor right there. So what you do is you take a long pair of pliers and you unplug that sensor with the engine running. One of two things is gonna happen. Either your fan is gonna continue running whatever speed it's running, or it is gonna go into friggin' hyperdrive. All right, now what's happening, if you unplug that, the ECU no longer has view into what the temperature is of the coolant. And it says, it starts to panic, and it says, screw it, if we can't tell what temperature the coolant is, just tell the fan to run as fast as it can, because it, you know, just in case, to save the motor. So what I'm getting at is, if you unplug that and nothing happens, your fan or your solenoid or something is is wrong. Uh, but if you unplug it and it goes into hyperdrive, then your fan and everything's working and your problem is elsewhere. So I go out there, and, and by the way, this is true of pretty much all vehicles. This is how you test an electric fan on a four liter XJ or WJ or ZJ or anything. Uh, you pull that, there, there, there'll be a temperature sensor somewhere, and if you unplug it and your fan does not kick into high, then your fan or your relay or your fuse or something is the issue. So I go to my Jeep and I unplug that, and lo and behold, it tries to go faster, but you can tell that something is holding it back. So I'm wondering, is the solenoid bad? Could my fan itself be bad? Um, clearly my fan is not healthy at this point, right? So I've determined kind of where the problem is, but that didn't get me much further down the road. Considering how many vehicles the 4.7 got put into, there's not as much information out there about the cooling system as I would have hoped. Any issue I've ever had on a four liter, there's literally more information than I could ever read. Um, but when I went looking for why my fan might not be operating, I couldn't really find as much as I'd like. People said to replace the solenoid, so I planned the trip to the junkyard to get a solenoid. People said the fan could be trashed. Um, you can't buy the solenoid from Mopar anymore. You have to get one used. The fan, uh, you can get the whole fan assembly, uh, but it's like $1,000, so that was clearly not gonna happen. So I'm planning a trip to the junkyard. In the meantime, um, my power steering pump was going in this Jeep, and I wondered if maybe the power steering pump being weak wasn't causing the fan to be weak because they're run off each other. That, that made sense to me. So I, I actually was able to convince myself to calm myself down and, and relieve some of the demoralization that I was feeling um, that a power steering pump is going to fix my problem. I actually built this up quite a bit and kind of put all my hopes in that basket. Um, so I get my new power steering pump, I replace it, I fill it, I turn the Jeep on expecting fully that when I turn my AC on to see the pump, uh, the fan uh, click into high, turn the AC on, it does not click into high. Again, it tries to go faster, you can tell, but something's holding it back. I go and pull the temperature sensor, same thing. It was at this point that I sat down in my garage and I stared at the Jeep and I considered pushing it into the ocean. Uh, I regretted selling my XJ because that thing didn't have a goddamn problem. Uh, I regretted buying this Jeep altogether. I was generally kind of annoyed. I really did not want to have to pull the fan because uh, you know, pulling the fan in these things is a giant pain in the butt. It's connected to your uh, is a, your uh, power steering system and it's not easy to wiggle it out. I really, I just was not interested in that level of a project. It was at this point where I remembered something that I had, I'm sitting there, picture this, right? So I'm, picture, uh, I'm sitting in the garage, I'm sweaty, I'm covered in ATF, which is my least favorite smell in the friggin' world, all right? And I'm thinking, about what to do next, all right? Uh, I can't actually push the Jeep into the ocean and uh, the new owner of Little Buck was certainly not gonna give him back in exchange for a broken WJ. And I'm, I'm just kind of soul searching, like panic is setting in, what am I going to do? I need to get this thing fixed. I don't have time to be chasing these issues. And at this point I remember something that I read on the forums. When I changed the radiator, when I first got this thing, uh, I had to remove the fan, which meant I lost some of the power steering fluid. I noticed at that point that it was clearly ATF that was coming out of the power steering pump. I went to the forums and I tried to figure out what 
Is that what this thing takes for power steering fluid? Uh, and it was split 50-50. Guys tell me, oh, you gotta use Mopar power steering fluid. Another guy said, I've been using ATF plus four in my 4.7 power steering system uh, for its entire life. I got it from the dealership. It's got 400,000 miles on it. It's fine, ATF. I've run into this before. You'll get the purists who swear you have to use Mopar fluid at $20 a quart, but a bunch of other people are using something for $5 a quart and it works fine. So which way do you think I went? I refilled it with ATF. When I put the new power steering pump on, I filled it with ATF. So I went back to the forums and I dug deep. And I didn't find it on a Jeep forum, I found it on a Dodge 1500 forum. Somebody, I mean like five pages into the Google search, somebody in like 2009 had the exact issue. He said, my, I replaced my power steering pump because it had gone, my fan is spinning, but it, it, it wants to spin faster, you can tell, but something's holding it back. And what did this guy do? He, he had been running ATF, he flushed the ATF, he got Mopar uh, hydraulic power steering fluid and immediately fixed the problem. So, I hopped in my Jeep, I went up to the Dodge dealership, I went to the parts counter, I bought two quarts of hydraulic power steering fluid for $20 a freaking quart! That made me so angry. At that point, if this hadn't fixed it, I was gonna burn the Jeep down. I'm spending $40 on two quarts of fluid. But, I go home, I flush it, I flush it again, I put the hydraulic power steering fluid in and it immediately fixed the problem. Immediately. I turn my AC on and boom, my fan starts kicking on high. And I mean, it was moving. And it occurred to me, I've never actually seen that fan running at full speed because the ATF was holding it back. I was, I was elated. I, I was so happy that this was saga was finally over. Um, but in reflection, here's what the issue was. ATF plus four is a lot thicker, significantly thicker than the hydraulic power steering fluid that the guy at the parts counter gave me, the Mopar stuff, the stuff that came from the factory uh, in this Jeep, uh, the stuff I was supposed to be using all along. So what I figure is the gear rotor was never inside the fan, was never able to get spinning fast enough because it was operating on this heavy, thicker automatic transmission fluid that it was never designed to run on. Um, that's probably what threw my pump out, honestly, because I guess the pump was also designed to operate on, you know, power steering fluid, not ATF plus four. Um, whoever put ATF plus four in this thing, the previous owner, somebody somewhere along the line, he really screwed me. Uh, and uh, I didn't question it, that's what was in there, so that's what I put in, and in turn I screwed myself. I probably killed my, um, my old power steering pump when I put more ATF in uh, after I changed the radiator. I almost killed a new power steering pump doing the same thing, and I'm, uh, I'm just damn glad that I figured it out. So I'm here today to tell you, if you have the 4.7 and you have the hydraulic cooling fan, which they did not use in all years. Um, they used it in the very early 2000s, and that was about it. I think they did away with it. It's a pain in the butt. It's, I get, I get it, but I hate it. And honestly, the hydraulic cooling fan, even though I have it figured out now, it might be something that would prevent me from buying another 4.7. Because if your power steering pump, it's just, first of all, if your power steering pump goes, your engine overheats, so that's friggin' stupid. Um, but on top of that, it, it just, it seems unnecessary. I, will, I would rather have a mechanical fan and an electric fan. That's what they did in 1999 when they first put the 4.7 in the WJ. I think they did it into 2000 as well. Um, 2001 was the first year that had the full, full year of hy uh, hydraulic fans. And then in 04, they did away with it. So clearly they realized this was stupid and unnecessary. It's the kind of thing German cars, car makers do, just over-engineer something, make it complicated for the sake of being complicated, uh, to show off whatever, but then the the consumer ends up suffering. So let's put a bow on this thing. We'll get it cleaned up, we'll get it uh, fixed up, and we'll, we'll, we'll close this video out. I fixed the fan issue. It was user error all along. Since I fixed the cooling fan, i.e. put the right fluid in it and, and, and allowed it to operate properly, the Jeep runs at about 197 to 207 degrees Fahrenheit. Right now, I'm 40 minutes into my commute. The engine is plenty hot. It's 69 degrees outside, and the engine is running at 199 degrees Fahrenheit. I got my scanner running right now. I have been monitoring it the past week to try to get a good feel for what normal is. 
Um, yesterday, or not yesterday, the day before, it was about 89 degrees here, and the highest I saw it get was about 210 when I was sitting at a stoplight for longer than expected, but the fan came on, cooled it right down. You can actually hear the fan kick on. It is a powerful fan, I'll give them that. Fan kicked on, did the trick. Now, the elephant in the room is that this Jeep ran hot during the hottest part of the summer for about two months. And my, my question, actually I'd like some advice from you guys is, what do I do about that? Should I pull my heads and replace my valve seats? If this thing were to drop a valve seat and eat itself, I would never buy another 4.7. And I would be, I would be livid. What do you guys think I should do in response? I can't change it. It's fine now. It's fixed now, but it did get hot. It did not overheat fully. I never saw dash lights, check gauges. I never pinned it, but it ran hot. Uh, I have reason to believe that maybe it got as hot as 220 before I started monitoring it closely because the gauge doesn't tell you very much. You just know, oh shoot, it's above the, the middle, so I, you know, something might be wrong. Um, which is why for the rest of the summer, honestly, I'm probably gonna run with this uh, scanner on just as now I'm a little nervous about the whole thing. So what do you guys think? This project's not done. I still, I fixed the issue, but now I need to clean up the mess and I need you guys to let me know what cleaning up the mess looks like. I know there are a lot of you out there who love the 4.7, so let me know what you think should be done. Has anybody ever uh, dropped a valve seat after getting hot? Um, I don't have a lot of experience with the 4.7. I don't have any. I've got, since I bought it in February, uh, I may, I, I'll, I feel comfortable saying I am pretty familiar with the 4 liter. Uh, about as familiar as most guys can get. Uh, but I don't have that same familiarity with the 4.7, which uh, makes it difficult for me to know where to go from here. Uh, I'm still weary of this engine. I am going to tow the boat later this month with it, but I'm going to be clenching the whole time. You know what I mean? Hoping it doesn't get hot. So anyway, uh, leave me a comment down there in the squawk boxes. Responses to my issues, responses to my uh, this video in general, and suggestions on how to move forward are very much much appreciated. Uh, I just want to share one other piece of really cool news. Uh, when we did our live stream to celebrate two years on YouTube, we said that we were hoping that we could get Uncle Jerry the Monkey, our monkey with the toolbox stickers that we've been selling on Etsy. We had been selling a bunch of them, but we hadn't made it outside the United States. Well, yesterday we got our very first order for outside the United States. Jerry the Monkey is on his way to one of our longtime viewers. Um, got a YJ. I talk to him all the time up in Winnipeg, Canada. So Jerry finally made it outside the United States. Congratulations to Uncle Jerry. Um, I'll cut it here. As always, thanks for watching. See you next time.